this video is to show the new first in Michigan video system for 2016. It's basically all contained in a, in a rack mount uh, box. It's about 27 inches tall. Um, what you see here in double time is me opening and getting out various parts and pieces of it. There's a monitor box, a keyboard that's wireless, a mouse that's wireless, and a couple of coax cables. The monitor fits nice in a box and has a uh, piece that attaches to the bottom. You got to line up those two pins to get it just right. And then keep all the packaging because we'll have to put it back in it when the event's over for the week end. And there's a GoPro attached to me, but sorry, the angle's a little off. Uh, this is version 1.0 of the video. Inside the drawer, there's the wireless mouse. Notice there's a label on just about everything. The back of the case has Velcro strips for the power and for the power and an HDMI output for the monitor itself. It's pretty easy to just undo it, Velcro it back up so it stays neat and out of the way. This is a good view of the front of the system. Uh, there is a key on that drawer. The drawer contains a GoPro, some uh, HDMI to SDI converters and various wires that uh, you'll see and all the wires have a label. That one very quickly says Fim Video 15 foot. It's a coax. And a GoPro clamp. A case for the GoPro. That box I'll show the contents later and all the contents and pictures in just a f minute or two in the video. The GoPro packs away pretty neatly in the box. Really only need the camera itself, but there's a lot of other stuff that comes with a GoPro. I just clamped it to a nearby uh, table unit for the purpose of this video. There are two separate cables for the GoPro. One is the HDMI and the other is a USB. They're both about 15 feet long. In practice, it will go at the top of a stand clamped on and that 15 foot ought to get right to the bottom and this is a handy little USB and power um, that you can put on the end of an extension cord at the base of the GoPro stand. That way you only need one extension cord to power both it and an SDI to HDMI converter. The connectors look very similar, and they only go in one way. A GoPro through the case is a little difficult sometimes to turn on. Just hold the button for a second. It should beep three times. Um, again, there'll be a better shot of this later, but that is an SDI to HDMI converter. What it allows us to do is use coax for a lot of the long runs and avoid the problems with HDMI cables that usually only work if you're lucky 25 feet, more practically 10 to 15. This is all pretty self-contained here, but there's a 50 foot cable that goes to the GoPro, which should stick all the way back behind the robot tables and almost up to the bleachers. This wire is uh, another converter, and this is how we will hook the field up. I'm simulating the field with a laptop here. So all this is zipping by kind of quick. There's a coax. It plugs into the back of the unit. There's an entire patch panel. And again, there's a picture of that a little bit later that's a little pause for a second so you get a better look at it. The HDMI is just coming right out of the laptop into the, into the converter. And there's a quick glance at it. It's just a PowerPoint with a uh, picture of the field. There's the contents of the GoPro. Another shot of the cables. You can just pause the video if you need a better look at these. 
Uh, the white box contents is three HDMI to SDI converters, the amount of price power converter for the GoPro and SDI. There's a shot of the back patch panel, so you don't really have to dig around in the back of the computer. Two Ethernet feeds, one for the internet, one for the field. Uh, that's for pit display. A GoPro and a field uh, coax connector line out, line in, so you can uh, stream audio. And this is the actual machine, so these, the rest of the video is uh, screen captures of uh, running vMix, which is the system to do all of the video. First open Google Drive, and when you get into this, it clips along here pretty fast. I'm opening PowerPoint for the sponsors. So I'm checking out the sponsor slides. That was all available in the Google Drive folder, which should be your event. This one comes from AV Training, which you're welcome to get the unit and fire up and take a look at. Um, the nice thing about the sponsors is you run PowerPoint locally on the machine. So if you start it up first and run it in a windowed mode, the slideshow will start. And then we can just use desktop capture later in vMix to grab the slideshow it'll just keep running in the background underneath what you're doing so that the sponsor slides are available i'm launching vmix by double clicking on a vmix uh, configuration file and it'll take an extra minute to come up but all of the inputs are already defined so the camera the field all of the opening videos um, the sponsor slides we'll have to do a little trick here to get it running um, that's already done um, this is using 2015 videos for the opening. So there's an error on the desktop sponsors display. When you first bring it up, you just need to click the gear icon. And it'll allow you to do a change on that desktop capture. Just pick the my this computer. And there's a couple settings in here to make it as good as you can. Uh, pick the PowerPoint slideshow. Then get the frame rate as high as you can to 15, or 30, I'm sorry. And uh, say, capture hidden window. It's hidden, it's underneath what you're doing. And then once you've done it right, it'll show you a preview. Since there's nothing else on there, there's a left, underneath there, there's a left preview screen and a right is what you're showing out your output, which is the video output of the uh, card itself. There's a connection on the back HDMI for the projector, which will show up later in the video. Um, this is how you can adjust it if needed. There's different crop settings, so you can take the uh, white bars off the top and the bottom. Um, you can also arrow key for real fine adjustments. Just press the up, down, left, right arrow and it will adjust as well. Besides cropping, there's uh, various zoom settings as well. So you can fill the screen as best you can. Just a little more adjusting to get it to look just right. And there we go. Now over here there's a red and a green. What there are is there are categories. So you don't have to see all the inputs at the same time. There's one that I left off that I'm changing to green um, because it's part of the uh, opening videos. So all the greens are opening videos, and all the reds are your matches. So you can just collect, select the green button, and then you can deal with your videos. Make sure they all play, um, cut them over, pause them. They will automatically restart 
when you cut to them or when you use a transition effect. So it doesn't matter where it was left at, it'll always start at the beginning when you put it up on the screen. It's much bigger. So it's pretty easy to change back and forth between uh, whatever video needs to be played next in the script and the sponsor slide. Well, we're just checking there and you can hit the restart. You can drag it around, take a look at however you want to uh, manipulate the video. There's also a title screen, which is really helpful for uh, the guest speakers and such. So there's just a Mickey Mouse and uh, a couple of names from first in there. Um, this just kind of shows you that you can add. It is You want to play with this a little bit. It is a little funny how it works. Uh, it's you it kind of adds a new one by copying an old one. Um, it's best just to do it and see. Once you get it the way you want, there's an import and export button there that I believe I show a little bit later. Um, that's just showing you that once you right click on there, you can select the name you want and check out the animation before you cut over to it. Well, if you cut over to it, it'll go full screen, which is generally what you want um, during the opening ceremonies when someone's talking. They don't really need to be on top of the sponsor slide. Um, should just be about whoever's doing the talking. So you can use whichever transition effect. That's what all those buttons are there, different transition effects to go from one thing to the other. And there's an example of changing the name for the next speaker or guest. There's the import and the export button, so you can clear the whole thing out. Um, it'll just save it to a CSV file. So your best bet is to get things the way you want and then say export to a CSV file. If you have any trouble, then you'd be able to just restore that file by uh, doing an import. And it'll put all the names right back in. Another feature of this is it's really an overlay. Um, that's what the one, two, three, four are for up to four overlays. So you can click the button and have it go on top of whatever you have in your uh, primary screen. So that's what this demonstrates here. It'll go right on top of the sponsor slides or whatever file you happen to have up. So this is uh, the American flag and the national anthem. Um, I did capture to another capture, so the audio quality might not sound that great. Don't worry about that. It is not a problem. Um, the demonstration of this here is you'll see the green bars both in the center and by the input down below. That's because audio is enabled. Um, Generally, we have people singing the national anthem or performing at these type events. So usually you don't want the audio. Um, and that's what you can do with the gear. You can get in there and check the button. And then you'll see that there's no highlighted green. And there's kind of a dimmer looking green next to the input that tells you there is audio there, but it's not coming out. Um, that's the way you get it to work. So you can have a singer and still put the American flag up. So after the opening ceremonies, uh, you can just click the red button and then you only have to deal with the inputs for running a match. So you have your sponsor slides. You have a combination of the video and the score screen, which uses a neat little trick in VMix called virtual inputs. So it takes a copy of the field camera and a copy of the FRC computer and puts them together in one screen. Um, you're welcome to take a look in the gear uh, on that input to see how it works. Uh, but you can just use it as is. So pretty much during the match, you're switching between sponsors, The uh, and here come our scores display, which is what this is. 
and you keep the sponsors to the left and you can flip back and forth pretty easily as a scorekeeper over at the FRC table changes the game. When the next match is ready, you're all queued up and ready to go. When the team announcements start, you do a transition effect as the uh, MC starts announcing all the teams and the announcer reads off uh, their sponsors. Um, there are different effects in vMix. Uh, if you click the arrow drop down, you can pick various ones. You can change the time of them. Um, there's an actual T-bar, like a hardware switcher. If you want to use it, you can mouse over to it. Um, I typically don't, but it's there if you want to uh, try it out. Uh, save settings is just a way if you do want to change around your inputs you are welcome to do that you just have to save it I would recommend you save as a different name than the, the original one so you can always go back um, so if you want to customize something if you want the inputs to look a little different for you it's okay just save the file um, we're gonna save the basic setup for each event in its own folder so it'll roll out to the next event the next week and They'll start over and this video will make sense because it will all be the same. Okay, so streaming, you really just have to click the button. It'll already be set up for Twitch. Uh, we may change it to YouTube, but it's a little early to be making this video. But there it is for Twitch with the settings all taken care of. Um, and you can do a view status and you should see a nice healthy stream uh, going through. Generally if it doesn't work, stop and start vMix, maybe even reboot the computer um, if it's been around all night. Uh, just try it early in the morning before anything starts and you should be fine. Um, recording, uh, we do do it so for manual use. Uh, we will record the matches, so if you do a start recordings, it will record off to a folder on a spinning drive, the D drive, which is uh, several terabytes inside as opposed to the SSD that you're running off of. Um, you'll want to name it to your event, and you'll have to rename those matches as they go during the day, which I'll show you an easy way at the end of this video. Um, pick a 720p size, so that's what that is there which is plenty big enough and decent quality, but doesn't take a whole lot of space. So if you just hit the red button at the beginning of the match or any time close to it, and after the final scores come up, you click it when you're done. You can get information on it, but that's gonna save a file locally that then at the end of the day, will load all those up to uh, YouTube. That's this live stream shows you the event nonstop, but doesn't save anything. The record works at the same time though. vMix can handle all of this at the same time. The record is for archive purposes on YouTube. So the first in Michigan YouTube videos that you saw last year from all the different matches at all the different competitions. This is how it was done when vMix was used at uh, several of the events. To stop them at the end of the day, just click the button. It'll, it'll stop recording, it'll stop streaming. So on the workstation itself, if you look in the storage drive under vMix recordings, um, there's a couple of recordings in there. This is just a quick trip tip if you need to rename these files a lot because vMix will do it by chronological. So it'll just timestamp it, which isn't really helpful. If you do an F2, it'll allow you to edit the file and then you just hit tab. Don't hit enter. F2 and tab. You'll be able to go right through them real quick. Um, nice editing tip. Um, that I picked up from someone. So that's a pretty basic overview of vMix as it's used uh, for first in Michigan competitions. Uh, I hope this video has been helpful. Uh, in the future, we are going to be adding automation. Um, there's a nice API set in vMix. And we did test it last year. We're going to need to get into week one in 2016 to get this worked out. 
but uh, the record functions and the uh, switching during the matches can be automatically done by reading the field state. Um, more to come on that. Uh, we'll hopefully get that worked out on week one. Until then, thanks for volunteering and uh, watching the video.